Hello survivors, Sai here for First Aid Spray with some fresh off the presses hot news regarding the Resident Evil Dead by Daylight chapter which launches June 15th. It's been announced via the Dead by Daylight 5th anniversary stream where they announced the content of the Resident Evil chapter. We're going to take a quick look at what they showed. First of all, most importantly, what comes as part of this chapter in terms of map, killers and survivors. So let's start with the survivors. Uh, this whole package is very much remake inspired so it makes sense to reach into both Remake 2 and Remake 3 and that world to pull Leon and Jill uh, as the two survivors as part of this pack which is nice. It could have just been one but they've really gone all out which is pretty much going to be a theme for this entire video. It's really nice to see both of these characters representing two different games that take place in the same location. And also, I mean, I think this is the first time that Leon and Jill have starred in something together, which is quite interesting. But nonetheless, it's cool to see them here. Uh, we got a little bit of gameplay from them, mostly just kind of wandering around and doing the Dead by Daylight thing. Uh, working on those generators to try and escape the map. Uh, we did get a little bit of information on the perks and stuff that they can bring. Uh, not too much in terms of a display of what it does. Leon apparently can craft a flashbang mid-match, which is quite interesting. Uh, for those of you who don't know Dead by Daylight, you usually pick an item before you go into the map from your inventory, or you can find something along the way. Um, but apparently Leon, one of his perks is to create a flashbang which I guess is to stun the killer. That's usually what they do in the Resident Evil games. Uh, it makes sense as a, de as a sort of defensive thing. Um, Dead by Daylight is not combat focused. I wouldn't say anti-combat, but there is no fighting back. The survivor characters uh, don't have any weaponry or anything like that. It's, it's very much about escaping for them. So it, it's cool to have something like that to stun potential killers with. And we didn't really get a whole uh, look at to what Jill's perks are or anything like that. But I guess we'll find out before too long, considering this is launching in just over... Well, we know it's like three weeks from now, I guess. Um, so yeah, they look good. You know, Leon looks a little bit funky, I suppose, in that main image. But otherwise, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, it's, it's cool to see them. And I think as well, um, Dead by Daylight is pretty good for cosmetics. There was no word on, on what that's going to be like, you know, if there's going to be any at all and what level that's going to be. Uh, yeah, Capcom are usually pretty pretty keen to play ball with this sort of thing. And I think, um, I mean, out of all the iconic Resident Evil characters, many people have different iconic looks. But Jill has plenty of cool outfits they can pull from, of course. The Star's outfit would be great. Uh, you'll probably get Battlesuit from Resident Evil 5. And Leon as well, of course. There'll be some costumes in there from Resident Evil 4 you can expect. And, and maybe even stuff like Resident Evil 6, perhaps. So it's going to be interesting to see what the cosmetics are like as well as how they play. But it seems like a, that's a pretty decent selection. Especially for the overall package they're going for, which is clearly set in the, uh, the world of the remakes. Which is... Uh, which brings us now to our killer, which, again, there's a lot to choose from here. They could have gone OG with it, they could have gone right back to RE1, they could have gone to Village, but instead they've gone with Nemesis, which I think is pretty cool. Um, his presence in Remake 3 was somewhat of a point of contention, that he wasn't really... F uh, he didn't quite have as many appearances, um, so maybe this will alleviate some of that issue. I mean, not really, but it is nice to see him again. And see him get represented again. And he seems to be represented quite well here. He's got ranged attacks with those tentacles. Uh, he can infect survivors with the T-Virus. Which is one of his sort of more uh, personalised abilities. We've seen this kind of thing before in Dead by Daylight. A little bit with other characters like the Doctor. Who can send survivors mad. And they see sort of like hallucinations and stuff like that of him. Um, whereas this T-Virus infection uh, makes survivors sort of wounded and sick and, and vomiting and, and all kinds of nasty stuff. So along their exploration of the map, they'll have to pick up uh, vaccines to keep themselves going. Um, so yeah, he seems pretty cool. Again, uh, <laughs> this one's a little bit weird, but it'd be nice to see what the cosmetics uh, are for Nemesis, if there are any. That's kind of interesting, I suppose, the concept of that. Um, the Mr. Raccoon Nemesis we talked about in our RE-verse. I'm just saying, that's a possibility. Uh, um, what's also special about Nemesis is he has zombies with him, and they kind of made it... I mean, 
the reason to believe that this is going to be on every map he appears on. He won't um, be short of zombies wherever he goes. And that's the thing about Dead by Daylight. You never know where you're going to be. The map is, is random. So, of course, Nemesis will crop up on every map in the game. And I guess he'll be bringing zombies with him, including Misty, the classic female zombie design from Resident Evil 2. What a really interesting, nice touch. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that balances. It's more obstacles for the survivors to overcome. I'm really excited about this part. But yeah, Nemesis looks good, the survivors look good, but I think above it all, what looks most impressive is the map, which is the RPD. Of course it is. It's uh, almost certainly the front runner. You know, there was a lot of debate whether it was going to be Nemesis or Tyrant, perhaps. Um, but the RPD was... Uh, very clearly going to be the location, I think, in terms of the number one pick. And they made the right decision. I mean, this is the most striking thing, I think, from the little live stream there. Uh, I mean, it looks gorgeous, and the team have been working on their graphics over the past year, as they said, and it really does show. Uh, it's a wonderful looking map, and more than that, it's, it's not even just like a rough approximation. Like, it's really interesting to see this map in a whole other engine because this is the RPD it looks like the, the complete building it doesn't really look like any corners will be cut we know, can't say for sure there aren't rooms you can't get into that they did maybe didn't show and some places that might be barricaded off you know that it, it's, with its probably parts you probably can't go into the basement and stuff but for the most part it looks pretty faithfully reconstructed um, but with some changes to obviously make the gameplay of Dead by Daylight work within it so various bits of rubble uh, to sort of skirt around to play the, do the sort of cat and mouse thing that you do with the killer uh, walls blown out to make sort of exploration and some pathways make more sense and you know there's more variation there um, the choices they've made just look really really good and, and the location itself looks really really good i'm really excited to wander around this very familiar location it's going to be very odd uh because a lot of the dbd maps in the game they are really just rough approximations of places whereas this is is, is straight up the rpd and the, the sheer love of, of resident evil shines through in this they really they really do care and it shows um the whole presentation of this looks super super good i'm really excited to not just try out the survivors, not just try out Nemesis, but more than anything, just wander around this map and, and see what they've done with it. It's really cool to see it um, in this kind of in this way. It's, it's yeah, what a wonderful way to celebrate the 25th anniversary. Clearly, they do care. There's some wonderful little touches in there, like. There's item chests in Dead by Daylight that you can open for items. So, of course, in the Resident Evil one, they look more like Resident Evil item chests. And that's really cool. What did you guys think of this Dead by Daylight Resident Evil chapter reveal? If you're a Dead by Daylight fan, are you very hyped? And if you're not a Dead by Daylight fan, will this convince you to give it a try? I've only been playing it myself for, I don't know, a couple of months now, I guess. Um... I've always been kind of interested in it, and I'm so far, I'm really enjoying it. It's a good, good game to play with friends if you've got a little group with you, much like Resistance was, and it's it's similar, obviously. Resistance was inspired by this kind of 4v1 gameplay, but uh, yeah, they've they really nailed it in terms of the, the tense and the horror atmosphere in previous outings, so I'm really excited to see how the Resident Evil stuff plays myself. Pretty pumped for this, personally, but let me know in the comments how you feel about it, how you feel about Resident Evil joining Dead by Daylight. Uh, not only is this the first time that Leon and Jill are crossing over, I'm pretty sure this is the first game that's going to have both Silent Hill and Resident Evil content in it, so that's pretty cool. If you like this video, of course, give it a like, subscribe for more Resident Evil content. We're always putting out editorial videos, podcasts, all kinds of stuff. And as always, have a good week, guys.